Welcome all again in the deep dive spirituality connected by North America Institute of Vihangam Yoga. My name is Vijay Kumar and I'm joining this session from Edison, New Jersey. In the last session, we discussed about uh, the topic called Sadhguru. We wanted to understand that the Sadhguru entity is an eternal entity. It is mentioned in Atharved by the Doha that says Antisantam na Jahati Antisantam na Pashyati. It is mentioned in Rig Veda where it says Twa Dutam Agne Amritam Yuge Yuge. And it's mentioned at several other references in those uh, Vedas. I have not quoted all of them. The same is also mentioned in Swarved, where it is discussed that uh, there is an eternal Sadhguru, an eternal master, who is the master of all masters. It is that eternal Sadhguru, Nityanadi Sadhguru, who is the giver of Brahmavidya, who is the carrier of Brahmavidya. Sadhguru Sadhafal Devji Maharaj uh, discussed about the entity Sadhguru in Swarved and he clarifies that it is that eternal master who brings down the Brahmavidya in this mortal land in every era and it is the eternal Sadhguru who appears and guides all the Rishi Munis who are meditating for the wisdom, for the knowledge. It is he who appears in the human scent form and then will give the technique, the divine technique to those true seekers. And so Sadhguru is in two forms, two forms we discussed last time. The Sadhguru is either in Vyakta form or in Abhyakta form. He can guide us in any form, either in the, the human form or with his true conscious form, by which he is anyway close to everybody, watching everybody. So Vyakta or Abhyakta hai Sadhguru doe swaroop Anubhav gati Abhyakta hai Antar Shabda the conscious form, the non-physical, non-human form is called abhyakt form, which is experienced in anubhav, mean, means in meditational experience. When our meditation reaches to the chetan mandal, beyond the prakriti, that is where all these conscious elements, conscious entities, start coming into our experience, be it the soul, the self-realization, be it the Akshar Brahm realization, the Sadhguru realization, and eventually God real realization. Those are the subject of Vihangam Yoga, fourth and fifth stage of, Vihang, of meditation practice. And then Sadhgudev uh, also expresses his own experience and he says, uh, and mandala kara hai vyapak vishwa mahan. So sadguru ka rupa hai anubhav mein pahichan. He says that, you know, that supreme form of sadguru, the eternal conscious form of sadguru is experienced in meditation. And he, he gives little hint about how does it looks like. He says, prakash man gola kar mandal. He said it's, it's bright, lighted and it's like all around. When it's Golakar Mandal, it means it's all around you. There'll be a Sadhguru Mandal which will come into your experience. And then uh, he also goes a little further in depth, uh, speaking about, you know, where is that Sadhguru experienced? The eternal, the subtleness of the Sadhguru is experienced after the Akshar, after the Akshar Mandal. You know, Sadhguru Mandal Agra hai. 
सैन समाधि प्रदेश पर पुरुषारत पूर्ण है पहुंचे अपने देश सी मेन्शन दैट यू नो देर इज अ दिव मंडल दिव लोक विच इज द अक्षर मंडल मीनिंग एट द लेवल ऑफ सेटलनेस वेयर द अक्षर मंडल इज एक्सपीरियंस्ड एंड देन एट द एंड ऑफ इट इज वेयर द सदगुरु मंडल इज एक्सपीरियंस्ड Sadguru Mandal, which is called Anubhav Chetan Samadhi Mandal. So these are just the terminology, just to depict the subtleness of the consciousness at which these entities are visible, experienced in meditation. So we don't need to, you know, go in very great detail about it, but just to make it very clear that these are the subtle conscious. elements and they have their own realm of subtleness at which when your consciousness reaches then these entities will come into your experience you don't go anywhere you remain in the body but only by meditation you are refining your consciousness to that level of subtleness and in that dimension in that level of subtleness that degree of refinement of your consciousness the elements will start appearing as they are we discussed that sadguru is uh, you know appearing in this mortal land in the vyakta form in physical form by four different ways one is that the eternal master himself appears in every era in every era when uh, the knowledge is not there when there is no rishis maharshis as sadguru in the physical form to teach this technique then for the first time the eternal master himself will come down to bestow this technique for example the eternal master came for sadguru sadafal dev ji maharaj when there was no physical form of sadguru available to teach brahma vidya technique to sadguru sadafal dev ji maharaj so this is how it happens so when the knowledge is not there on the mortal land it is the job of sadguru the nitya nadi sadguru the eternal sadguru to bring down this knowledge and revive it again so that is one way of having a vyakta sadguru the physical the human form of sadguru on the on the land but for nityanadi sadguru for the eternal sadguru to appear in front of any seeker in the human form it requires the highest level of seeking it requires the highest level of purity which the rishis like sadguru sadafal dev ji maharaj could only match so eternal master appeared in the human form to give him the final technique of sar shabd you know to get him into the god realization but what are the other ways that we found we we find the human form of sadguru the second one is swayam siddha sadguru the same see the sadguru you know comes from the abode of liberation it is those souls who have already served in the human in in this land as sadguru before and now they are gone from here their energy is gone from here and they are back in the liberation zone of liberation those chosen souls are then given the power of sadguru again to come down and bless some needy souls so such you know the the swayam siddha sadguru who appears in the mortal land he appears to bestow the brahma vidya technique to to chosen souls and then he will do his job and disappear swayam siddha sadguru is not here to stay for generations and generations for knowledge for brahma vidya to stay here generations after generations is the abhyasya sadguru and parampara sadguru so that is what is the the sixth the third and the fourth form of sadguru abhyasya sadguru is the one who who through through his practice through his abhyas he will 
you know becomes so much eligible for holding the sadguru power that sadguru himself eternal sadguru himself will come down and bestow him the power of sadguru and make the human form of sadguru and then when the sadguru is available to us as abhyas is sadguru for the sadguru energy to continue on this mortal land the abhyas is sadguru will appoint you know the next uttaradhikari the next you know eligible candidate to hold this power and he will transfer the power to that entity to make the parampara sadguru then whoever is the parampara sadguru then they will appoint the next parampara sadguru and will pass on the mantle the power to the next eligible parampara sadguru and in the process of transferring the power it is the eternal sadguru whose darshan happens and with his authority and permissions the transfer process is conducted it it does not happen just by the wish of the the human form of sadguru but it is by the wish of eternal sadguru without darshan of eternal sadguru nobody becomes the sadguru in the human form that is the process so we are going to discuss about that in detail what is the entire process of making of vyakta sadguru so as we understand that the sadguru in true form is a vyakt sadguru eternally is always exist existing as the conscious form but then for ignorant people like us who have no reach to the consciousness he has to come down in the human form or he has to empower some chosen soul as the human form of sadguru so what is the making of that human form of sadguru what does swarvet say about it swarvet says aj sadguru aj sukrit darshan nahi hoye pariksha nahi vah sadguru pad hai nahi vyarth guru jag mahi sukrit word is used for nityanadi sadguru nityanadi sadguru the eternal sadguru is known by different names he is known in vedas in the name of aj atri hiranyagarv dut sukrit munindra there are different names by which he is known so here in this couplet sadgus dakhal dev ji maharaj is calling nitnadi sadguru as aj sukrit so he is saying aj sukrit darshan nahi hoye pariksha nahi unless the nitnadi sadguru appears and passes on his uh, authority of sadguru to the chosen one unless he examines if this chosen one is truly eligible to hold my power or not vah sadguru pad hai nahi vyarth guru jag mai if that doesn't happen then just by a group of people saying that from now on you are my sadguru this this doesn't work out that way nobody can become sadguru because uh, uh, certain uh, organizations or certain groups or certain people have chosen them as sadguru it doesn't happen that way because sadguru is not a label to be given to any name but sadguru is a power it is a flow of energy that can be transferred and you know embraced you know when when only the eternal sadguru only when the eternal sadguru does it it is in the hand of eternal sadguru to pass on that power and only when he the eternal sadguru embraces the chosen one it is then the energy of the chosen one becomes the energy of sadguru so it's a transformation of the soul that happens in that process then it is not no more a individual soul 
then the energy the consciousness which is running in that human body is not of a soul then it is the energy of the eternal sadguru which is running that body it becomes like that so it's a complete transformation which happens in the process when the sadguru is chosen and made by flowing the energy that's what is mentioned here that jab tak sukrit dev ki aagya sanad nishap man mukh sadguru nahi bane adbhut sadguru ma unless the eternal sadguru you know kind of uh, testify it and then authorize it is then the sadguru is established it doesn't happen by anybody's own wish sadguru hone ke liye sadguru ki aashcharya mein kasauti hai us par satya nikalne par hi sadguru ka pad prapt hota hai meaning that uh, you know it requires very highest scale of the refinement at the level of soul before you are ready to be transformed as sadguru and in that level of test not a simple soul could qualify it requires very highest the highest degree of refinement and the atmabal you know the atma has to be that much capable to be ready to be transformed as sadguru it is only then the energy can be withhold withheld by that soul to get transformed into sadguru and i'll tell you a sense maran about it uh, later in this process that what does it mean so jab tak sukrit dev ki aagya sanad na chhap manmukh sadguru nahi bane adbhut sadguru ma the energy has to flow the energy of brahma vidya has to flow in that chosen one then only the chosen one becomes the human form of sadguru and that's what is mentioned further in swarved it says shut gyan dhara chali jagat guru jan soi sadhan shunya ve guru nahi jivan mukt guru hoy first of all the one chosen one has to be jivan mukt meaning the the god realized one who has already experienced almighty among them one is chosen among those such god realized yogis you know the the crores of the lakhs of so, such jivan mukt god realized yogis out of that one is chosen and after that the flow of brahma vidya the flow of god energy is transferred into that chosen one to make sadguru so jab jivan mukt yogi mein ishwariya gyan ka pravah bahne lagta hai tab sadguru ka pad prapt hota hai sadhan shunya guru vihin evam vachak gyani guru nahi hota just by becoming a scholar of vedas or let's say becoming scholar of swarved and all vedas upanishads if one person is able to explain everything beautifully intellectually he satisfying questions of every people will he become sadguru no aj guru ki chhaya pade sadguru pad adhikar विद्या पढ़ गुरु नहीं बने महाकठिन व्यवहार जस्ट बाय रीडिंग बुक्स बाय बीइंग स्कॉलर ऑफ द टेक्सुअल थ्योरीज यू डू नॉट बिकम सदगुरु यू बिकम वैदिक गुरु यू बिकम यू नो एनी अदर फॉर्म ऑफ गुरु बट नॉट सदगुरु सदगुरु रिक्वायर्स द फ्लो ऑफ ब्रह्म एनर्जी you need to be one with almighty and at the same time you need to be able to flow that energy to others for that you need to have a flowing energy in you only when you hold that flowing energy and you could channelize that energy to whoever you want to 
when you hold that power of being able to give brahma vidya knowledge to anybody in the soul without even uttering a word just by the gesture of the eyes you flow that energy to some soul and that soul is then god realized such power is what is called sadguru sadguru is not a matter of study vedas upanishads and becoming scholar of those textual mantras sadguru is a different entity and so it says vidya par guru nahi bane mahakadin vyavahar manmukh guru ban jagathage अनधिकार पद ले नष्ट करे संसार को जीव काल घर दे इफ दे आर गुरु हु डोंट डिक्लेयर दिस दैट यू नो हे व्हाट आई नो इज द थ्योरी एंड आई कैन गाइड यू आई कैन टीच यू दैट यस द द एम ऑफ द ह्यूमन लाइफ इज टू रियलाइज गॉड बट व्हेन यू आस्क मी how to realize god i don't have the technique to give you the guru has to be that honest if guru is not that honest if he says do this technique you practice it it will happen and the shishya the ignorant shishya disciple because that guru has some powers so they they would be following what guru says because at every levels of meditations there are siddhis and vibhutis there are certain natural powers that guru get but it doesn't mean that the guru becomes sadguru so what happens the disciple keeps following that guru honestly but yet their kal chakra of life and death does not end their human life goes west without realizing that what they were practicing was just to strengthen the bondage with prakriti but not to liberate so apne man ka swatantra gami manmukhi vyakti jo sadguru ke siddhant gyan se shunya niyam maryada aur adesh virudh aacharan karne wala hai vah guru ke anadhikar pad ko lekar sansar ko dhokha deta hai एवं सच्चे अनुरागियों का जीवन नष्ट कर द अनुरागी इज ट्रू द डिसाइपल इज ट्रू ही वॉन्ट्स टू लर्न दिस टेक्निक ही और शी वॉन्ट्स टू नो द ट्रू डिवोशन बट द लाइफ ऑफ सच डिवोट इज आर वेस्ट आर वेस्टेड बाय सच गुरु और उन्हें काल के घर भेजता है एंड दे लीव दैट ट्रू डिसाइपल्स ऑल्सो इन द माउथ ऑफ काल for the cycle of life and death manmukhi guru ban kar dusro ko updesh karna sant mat ke satya siddhant ke virudh vyavahar hai apne man se koi guru nahi hota nobody can self acclaim that i am sadguru because only sadguru makes another sadguru गुरु अपना ज्ञान जीवन एवं बल अपने प्रिय सुपात्र को देकर सदगुरु पदाधिकार बनाते हैं सदगुरु चूज ही चूजेज अ डियर डिसाइपल एंड देन देर इज अ प्रोसेस बाय विच ही ट्रांसफर्स एनर्जी देन दैट चूज इन वन बिकम सदगुरु बोध न सदगुरु हीन को जग मानी विद्वान भाग्यवान सदगुरु मिले जय ही प्रभु कृपा महान so so we are the fortunate ones we are the fortunate ones that we have been chosen by sadguru please know that without sadguru's own agreement acceptance we cannot even come close to the sadguru only after we have gathered enough punya in our life sanskaras in our life that we are discussing about the sadguru today sansar pratishthit bada vidwan bhi jo sadguru se vihin hai use bodh kabhi nahi ho sakta jis bhagyavan par sadguru ki mahan kripa hoti hai use hi sadguru milte hain 
only with the acceptance by the Sadguru alone, one reaches to the feet of Sadguru. And that is why if the seeker is not pure, if there is some cunningness in the heart of a seeker, if the seeking is not pure, then the Sadguru will be hidden. Sadguru is not for those who are not pure, who are not seeking him with the purity. The seeking has to be the pure, it has to be pure. Sanskaras from previous lives could be impure, but our seeking has to be pure. Once you realize that whatever I have done in life is not enough, now I understand I need something else. That seeking has to be pure. And then Sadhguru is all yours. So as we understood that the Vyakta form of Sadhguru, the physical, the human form of Sadhguru is made by the eternal Sadhguru himself. So let us now understand that when Sadhguru was not there on this mortal land, then how did Sadhguru Sadafal Devji Maharaj brought down this knowledge of Brahma Vidya on this earth? How did he become Sadhguru? So we are going to discuss about making of Abhyasya Sadhguru Sadafal Devji Maharaj. He writes his experience. He says, Bala pan abhyas mein mam shir angul raak, amar purush vah kaun hai tat veta yah bhaak. He says that in my childhood time, who was the one who was putting fingers on my top of the head? You know, invisibly, without being visible. He is saying that those who have... Uh, who are claiming that they know all the entities. Please explain about this entity who guided me in my childhood, who guides every other rishis, maharshis when they go in uh, such seeking. Please tell me about that entity. Mam swarupa me prakat bho khari me vahai Mam swarupa abhiman kya yah rahasya batlai I'll talk about it later. But Sadhguru Sadafal Devji Maharaj, right from his childhood, whatever technique he was given to practice, he used to practice the, that with complete honesty. Sometimes he used to practice certain technique by, you know, given by some gurus. That guru, whatever he could know, he will give to Sadhguru Sadafal Devji Maharaj as a seeker. And Sadafal Deji Maharaj will practice it so honestly that he used to continuously practice that for weeks and weeks without taking water and food and will fend down. He was so much, you know, hungry for it. And then the villagers will then wake him up and somehow take care of his health and then he will get back. Then he will again go to jungle, start doing that sadhana again. He, he was such a, you know, such hungry seeker of the wisdom. And then he will realize that, why I'm still not getting that element of consciousness. And during then, that invisible entity will guide him. And that's what he has been uh, expressing. That, Bala pan abhyas me mamasir angul rak. He will explain that Bala pan abhyas me mamashir angul raag Amar purush vah kaun hai tatva veta yah bhaag Who was one who used to guide me in my childhood? Sadhgudev further explains that it was eternal master who then eventually appeared in the human form for him. He says, Ganga tat juusi guha tirath raj priyag darshan aj sad guru diye jagi puran bhag. Priyag 
गंगा तट झूसी के समीप मिट्टी की गुहा में सदगुरु सदा हलदेव जी महाराज कुछ दिनों तक निवास किए थे उसी स्थान पर आपको महान योग योगेश्वर्य प्राप्त हुए हैं परमाणु विज्ञान की पूर्ण अनुभूति और जड़ चेतन समस्त तत्वों का बोध पूर्णतः उसी गुहा में हुआ है सदगुरुदेव अपने भविष्य में देह त्याग का ज्ञान रख करके करके ही उस स्थान पर चीर काल से रहते थे उन्हें अपने देह त्याग का काल और स्थान दोनों का ज्ञान था उन्होंने अपनी देह लीला का योग द्वारा विलय करने का निर्भ्रांत संकेत अपने देह त्याग के तीन वर्ष पूर्व वृतिकुट आश्रम पर किया था अंतिम समय के छह मास पूर्व भी उन्होंने अपनी देह की समाधि करने की बात मुझसे कही थी द द वन हु इज राइटिंग भाष्य इज प्रथमाचार्य सदगुरु धर्मचंद देव जी महाराज एंड ही इज स्पीकिंग फ्रॉम हिज साइड दैट सदगुरु सदाफल देव जी महाराज हैड बीन टेलिंग अबाउट वेन ही इज गोइंग टू एंड हिज ह्यूमन अपियरेंसेस and all that he is explaining that that sadguru dafal deji maharaj used to indicate about the place also that this is the place where i will be discarding my body so che mah purva bhi unhone apne deh ki samadhi karne ki mujhse baat kahi thi isi jhusi ki guha mein sadguru sukrit dev ka darshan prapt hua in the same cave of you know the jhusi ashram the eternal sadguru the nityanadi sadguru the Sad- sadguru sukrit dev appeared for sadguru sadafal dev ji maharaj jiski charcha aapne ukt dohe mein ki hai is punya tirth mein hi sadguru ka darshan evam ant mein aapke sharir ki samadhi di gayi so ganga tat jhusi ki guha par sukrit dev ka darshan aur sadguru dev ki samadhi ye dono karya mahatvapurna hai इसलिए भक्त अनुरागियों के लिए यह पुनीत परम तीर्थ है एंड दैट इज वाई वेन एवर वी गो टू इंडिया वेन एवर वी गो टू इंडिया दीज आर द आश्रम्स वेर वी गो एंड यू नो प्यूरिफाई अवर सोल बाय जस्ट बीइंग एट दैट आश्रम दिस इज वेरी प्योर द परम तीर्थ फॉर the devotees of vihangam yog yah sadguru dev ka param dham atmik shanti hum apne kalyan ke liye sadaiv darshaniy hum adarniy hai is pad mein sadguru dev ne apne guru dev ke darshan mein apne bhagya ki prashansa ki hai so who is the master of sadguru sadafal dev ji maharaj there are no worldly gurus who was the master of sadguru sadafal dev ji maharaj because whoever he went to that guru could not satisfy him eventually it was the eternal master himself the nityanadi sadguru himself who had who could satisfy the need of sadguru sadafal dev ji maharaj he speaks about nityanadi sadguru the eternal master फर्दर ही सेज उन्नीस साव है बानबे माघ कृष्ण है पक्ष सदगुरु मुही अपना या निजमत कर गए दक्ष सो हिस्स टॉकिंग अबाउट द कैलेंडर ऑफ विक्रम संवत नॉट द कैलेंडर दैट वी फॉलो द विक्रम संवत नाइनटीन नाइनटी टू कुड बी यू नो फिफ्टी सिक्सटी ईयर्स अहेड ऑफ आवर कैलेंडर सो नाइनटीन विक्रम संवत नाइनटीन नाइनटी टू विक्रम माघ कृष्ण पक्ष में नित्य अनादि सदगुरु सुकृत देव ने ग्रंथगार सदगुरु दाखिल देव जी महाराज को सदगुरु पद के लिए वर्ण कर अपनी अध्यात्म कला की भेद युक्ति बतला उनके सदगुरु पद को स्वीकृत किया इट इज इट वॉज दैट ओकेजन वेन द इटर्नल मास्टर इम्ब्रेसेस सदगुरु सुदाफल देव जी महाराज and transfers his power and energy to make him abhyas siddh sadguru nitnadi sadguru dev ke darshan aur unke bhedik tattva gyan prapt hone par evam unki atma swikriti dwara hi sadguru pad prapt hota hai only when the eternal sadguru embraces a chosen soul then only the soul transforms to become the 
द फिजिकल प्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ सदगुरु द व्यक्त सदगुरु जिसे वह अपना जान अपनी शरण में रखते हैं वे ही महापुरुष उनके द्वारा स्वीकृत होकर सदगुरु पद पर सुशोभित होते हैं सो वी कैन अंडरस्टैंड बाय दिस दैट बिकमिंग सदगुरु इज नॉट इन द हैंड ऑफ इवन द इंडिविजुअल हु इज प्रैक्टिसिंग नॉट इवन इन द हैंड ऑफ द ग्रुप ऑफ डिसाइपल्स even by devotion they call their guru as sadguru it doesn't mean that that guru becomes sadguru because sadguru is a different authority which is given by the nityanadi sadguru himself and uh, why is it that so that nobody can self acclaim to be sadguru because one who holds sadguru power they hold certain special ability certain ability to to awaken any chosen soul into the state of god realization and that too without uttering even a single word the one who are, who are a true vyakt form of sadguru they are capable of taking practitioner to the fifth level of meditation just by yogic power without uttering a single word so gurudev says sar shabd upadesh hai gunga gunge san avar bhed jane nahi mukh hoy mil san what it means is just as one dum the one who cannot speak right speaks to another people another person who has no tongue and they just speak by their gestures they are making gestures and conversation is happening the third person who has the ear and the tongue they will not understand what is going on third person will have no experience what's going on between them if they do not understand that language similarly when sadguru initiates a chosen one into sar shabd meaning the fifth level where the abode of god exists when sadguru initiates any chosen one into that level establish the chosen one into that level he does not utter any word he will just apply his yogic power by the gestures of eyes and something will start happening some light will start appearing into the experience of that chosen man only one who are eligible as a uttam jigyasu the purest soul are given the sar shabd upadesh meaning the fifth level of vihangam yoga meditation and that too without uttering a word what could be that yogic feat yogic power that sadguru needs to hold and it is only then he is a sadguru not the one who just speaks well guides well how far will you guide by your speak by your speech you know in meditation there is no place of speech in meditation it's a play of consciousness and then only a true sadguru can take you beyond beyond this prakriti the elements which does not exist in the realm of speech and mind it is only a true sadguru who can unfold those entities to you so that, that's why it is said that uttam jigyasu mile देव बोध दर्शाए देव सदा फल वक्र गति तह गुरु भेद छिपाए इट इज ओनली द द टॉप कैडर द द प्योरेस्ट जिज्ञासु द डिसाइपल व्हेन दे कम इन फ्रंट ऑफ सद्गुरु देन सद्गुरु डजंट इवन हैव टू प्रीच एनीथिंग ही डज नॉट यू नो हैव टू गिव अ प्रवचन और एनीथिंग टू दैट डिसाइपल he will simply unfold that mystery of god into the soul directly 
all of a sudden the soul will start experiencing certain thing in the meditation so brahma vidya ka uttam jigyasu milne par purna bodh tatha brahma ka sakshatkar ya darshan hota hai और जहां पर कुटिलता प्राप्त होती है वहां ब्रह्म विद्या का गोपनीय अनुभव तत्व ज्ञान प्रकट नहीं किया जाता सी सेंग किया जाता नहीं किया जाता वट डज इट मीन इट मीन्स द सोल इज नॉट द वन हु कुड गेट द दर्शन ऑफ गॉड द गॉड रियलाइजेशन इज डन बाय द सदगुरु एंड इफ ही विशेष टू हाइड इट then the disciple no matter how hard he tries the god realization realization will not happen isliye uttam koti ke jigyasu supatra mein hi brahma vidya ka daan karna chahiye so it is at that level of purity where things happen i would like to invite question at this point if there are people who have any questions related to it and then i'll talk about further samsmaran of prathmachar dev ji maharaj and, and the making of parampara sadguru uh, जय गुरुदेव जहाँ गुरुदेव का समाधि स्थल है झुंसी में वो एग्जैक्टली कहाँ लोकेटेड है या वेरी गुड क्वेश्चन मदन जी सो दैट इज प्रयागराज यू नो द त्रिवेणी संगम यू नो दैट एग्जैक्टली सो इट इज जस्ट क्लोज बाय दैट देर इज ए सदाफल घाट ऑफ आवर आश्रम विच इज so basically our ashram is just close to triveni sangam mm-hmm. and that ashram is uh, jhusi samadhi dham so we have the the sadguru sadafal dev ashram and jhusi samadhi dham at that place itself uh, is there a smarak or something made over there yes yes so there is there is a uh, yeah samadhi you know smarak over there which people go and get darshan mm-hmm. yeah uh, do we have any pictures uh, on the website or somewhere uh yeah we might have we'll uh, yeah we'll send you the link yeah, yeah until yeah. we get there physically at least <laughs> yes yes <laughs> yes of course yeah in in in, in thought yeah. we can we can have darshan yes yes uh, this this is this is amazing like you know what you're saying like <laughs> oh my god i mean uh, feel so fortunate to have you know uh, have been connected uh, to find like this this is this is the real deal I mean, you know janam 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 tak bhatak ke finally right. you know yes find you yes <laughs> of course of course and and we must have no doubt about it let me tell you yeah, yeah. we must have no doubt about it i'm telling this with my own experience we must have no doubt about it what is sadguru entity i can tell you with my own experience we must have no doubt about it yeah to hear your personal experiences because that is how you know your your belief gets reinforced and uh, listening to all these other speakers like you know is definitely enlightening yeah. uh so we listened to this gopal ji this morning and um, yeah. that was that was very enlightening and you know uh, mm-hmm. ob- 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 obviously when you do not know uh, mm-hmm. uh, doubt is a natural phenomena mm-hmm. because there are so many uh, commercialized uh, <laughs> gurus around mm-hmm. so, so you know that's a very natural thing to happen but you know <clears throat> you, you want to believe it you put your belief in it but like like you just mentioned in your explanation itself that you know if if so self if you get entangled with a self proclaimed guru uh, you waste all your life just for exactly. something which is which you don't know where it is going to lead you uh, exactly and, and but because you are putting your faith into it and you are just following it um and somebody is misleading you um you know that's 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 a misfortune i would call it so you know having 
having seen those things, having done those things, you do want to make sure that you know you're not wasting your life and your time um, right. in, in following something blindly. Uh, obviously, your your intellect and your mind does <laughs> ask you to verify and validate uh, that, so that you do not waste your time. Um, so this Absolutely, is yeah. this is very valid. It's, it's great that you know we are yeah. hearing all this. This uh, further validates, um, you know, any uh, any iota of doubt there may be uh, in you know subconscious mind. So mm, yes, and we, yeah. we would we would continue to look for those experiences which reinforce your belief over and over again. No, absolutely, and. Uh... Yeah, in, in, there was, a, I think, Rajesh or somebody else wanted to speak something. Yeah. Vijay, this is Anil. Oh, Anil, yes, yes. So, Sadhguru is a name, I think we keep hearing many times, like uh, social media, everywhere. So, right. it's kind of a confuses me, like uh, sometimes, like uh, I, I know there's a, <laughs> Eternal, like everybody is called himself a Sadhguru. There's right. so many people around it. So how, how do we deal with this? Like what's the reality versus what do you see it here? We don't know whether it is true or not. Or like a, right, right. Yeah, you know, like a, I just want to understand the basic concept and making sure that uh, when I'm approaching or reading about it or listening to somebody, making sure that uh, I listen to or read it the right way. Mm -hmm. Correct, correct. Yeah, it's a very genuine questions and very important questions, Anilji. So let us understand this way that first of all, who goes to find Sadhguru? That should be very clear first. The basics first. Okay? Uh, if if let's say you want to learn how to lead uh, a general behavioral life. You know how to deal with relationship and how to how what is the the best way the it the ethics and the stuff that makes you a beautiful human being. For that, you may find worldly guru also. Okay, there are worldly gurus who can teach you how to behave well, how to conduct your life well, so that you are leading your life like a human being not like animals they are called worldly gurus yeah so once you satisfy that need once you have become a human being and if you are a true spiritual seeker you will not stop there naturally naturally it will happen that you will not stop there because the more matured the soul you are sooner you will realize the bigger reality the bigger truth about who you are what you need out of life these natural seeking will start arising within us if the naturally the seeking is not going into that depth that means it is not the time for you to get Sadhguru. It's like that. It's not the time for me to get Sadhguru if I am naturally not maturing myself and going beyond just knowing how to conduct this human life. So that is why, you know, finding Sadhguru is the result of the maturity of a soul. When the soul starts understanding, the game of Maya, the Sukha and Dukha, slowly soul is maturing and understanding it. It is, it is then able to understand that, well, the things are very temporary here. The Sukha comes, my mind gets impacted. Dukha comes, my mind gets impacted. My mind is not stable, not able to conduct, not able to maintain my life with the stability. And even though the Sukha and Dukha I get, they are very short-lived, temporary. All these is happening in our life. But the matured souls are those who start noticing it. They will start no noticing this. 
but those who are ignorant you know being uh, flown in the maya in bhavdhar they will just be blinded and their life will go west so it requires maturity first to reach to that level of you know the evolution where you are evolved as a soul to understand that this much is done now i know how to conduct my life what's next your what's next will continue if you are a mature if i am a mature soul my what's next will continue and then you will seek a guru who can teach you about the soul what is soul the moment your these questions will come in your mind that now how to conduct my life how to manage mind these are done deal these i don't want to get into that now my seeking is about who am i what is soul what is almighty let me get to know about that when you seeking mature automatically there will be a floods of guru who will just not fit into your criteria automatically they will not fit into your criteria because your seeking has matured now they cannot fool you by just giving the biscuits of if you do this then you will feel blissful from inside when you do this you will be stress free and self managed because those are not your seeking anymore those are the childish play for you you don't want to get into that you know that those are the temporary things because unless we mature at the level of the soul one is not able to manage mind and maintain the way it is it is said by them you will you will mature you will slowly start recognizing this so all the floods of guru will just vanish from your list automatically if your seeking is so truthful and so in depth and the tattva gyan you know these theories that we have we are learning these tattva gyans are there in the in the vedas also but we do not read vedas we do not understand who is a true sadguru so when we get these tattva gyans we are better equipped now to figure out who could be a true sadguru so when we understand that there is an eternal master whose glory has been sung by all vedas upanishads that means the sadguru must have a relation with that eternal sadguru so let me find out those who are saying i am sadguru whether he have evolved or he has got darshan of eternal sadguru or not aaj sadguru darshan nahi hoye pariksha nahi yah to guru pad hai nahi virtha guru jag mahe you know just that the jag meaning the world might call anybody sadguru that's a different story it doesn't matter but does that guru have truly acquired the sadguru power from eternal sadguru when did that happen is it is, is there something like that which has happened with that guru and even though that is claimed that it has happened what is the job of sadguru what is the role of sadguru maya lok chhodaye kar चेतन लोक निवास सदगुरु ताको जानिए भक्ति मुक्ति जही पास इज दैट सदगुरु केपेबल टू क्लेम दैट अद्भुत मार्ग योग विहंगम मैं तुमको बतलाऊंगा यदि विधिवत तुम साधन करियो अमर लोक पहुंचाऊंगा सी द वर्ड्स ऑफ सदगुरु सदगुरु सेज आई टेक द अकाउंटेबिलिटी of taking you to the land of immortality to amar lok because it is my job to give you the bhakti and mukti it is my job your job is just to follow the technique that i give you and then it will be my job to take your consciousness to that level does the sadguru say with that confidence and authority if not 
then you can you can understand that the guru was shaking the moment the questions is raised about let's say what is mind oh guru please tell me what is mind where is the mind located in the body you search about this only what is mind and you will see very vague answers from very famous gurus also very big vague answer and that is why you know sahib kabir already gave this formula that if you have to find the true sadguru you just find by this question is tan me man kahan base nikas jaye kahi thor guru gam ho to parakh lo nahi to kar guru aur just verify that by this question where is the mind located in the body what is mind when you search these questions you will find very vague answers nobody will come to a conclusion that the mind is actually an entity because people do not understand what is mind and the reason they do not understand because that is the subject of true sadguru that is the subject which is experienced only beyond body what is the origin of mind the akshar brahm does guru know about akshar brahm you will find that people are not aware about what is akshar brahm entity which is the origin of mind akshar se man upaje akshar se man hoy पंच भूत से मन नहीं यह तत्व तो समझे कोई द माइंड इज नॉट कंपोज ऑफ द फाइव बेसिक एलिमेंट्स इट ओरिजिनेट्स फ्रॉम अक्षर ब्रह्म द गुरुज विल जस्ट बी शेकन वेन यू आस्क दीज क्वेश्चन एंड दैट्स वेर यू विल नो दैट ओके सो हिज सब्जेक्ट इज ओनली मैनेजिंग दिस फिजिकल बॉडी नॉट मोर देन दैट but the sadguru is about managing the soul not about managing your body and your chemicals of the body sadguru is about managing your cycle of life and death sadguru is about liberating you from the cycle of life and death sadguru is about opening your door of liberation sadguru is about self realization and god realization so when you have these theory in place then with this scale you can measure the depth of any guru you know there are disciples in bihangam yoga and maybe in usa also i don't want to take the name who could uh, just looking at the guru will know that where is his sadhana and their gurus were claiming themselves to be sadguru the vihangam yogi is go and look at that that guru and knows where he stands that is the power of a vihangam yogi to just measure what is the sadhana of this guru and to tell you frankly there are only rare few gurus who have ever attained even the second stage of vihangam yoga rare few they are just struggling in the first stage or the the yogic feat which is achieved in the first stage of vihangam yoga there are several gurus who have not attained even that they have just learned how to speak well how to manage the mind well but they have not known how to turn this consciousness inward so when you have these foundation in place you can easily figure out if you are a matured seeker you can easily figure out that because they will not be able to quench your seeking your seeking is of samundar of ocean and they will be feeding you the drops of water how can you be quenched you will not so the seeking has to be more deeper than what usually people have when you go in that in depth seeking automatically the floods of sadguru will vanish in front of you and what remains is the true sadguru who can answers who can answer who can quench your seeking uh, 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 uh thank you for that uh, 
this is madan bandari once more uh, so uh, when when we were listening to um, amit pal ji and he said like you know his uh, you know guru ji uh, opened his 10th uh, dwar right. uh, and then he's living his normal life so in in our in my understanding and generally the way it is portrayed that mm -hmm. once kundalini is awakened and you know a 10th door is open uh that's the ultimate people seek but what after that like you know what what changes do you feel in your life what what has changed what is like you know you are you in a constant state of bliss as they say or this is or this is some different experience or otherwise what is the purpose what what okay so what changes you yeah no no very good question so this is very important to understand also very good uh, madan ji that you raised this here so sadguru dev says it he says always that you know there are two ways that you get something one is that the guru will just show you the glimpse of it so that you are motivated to get and reach there and the other one is that you have raised yourself to that level by the practice by the blessings of sadguru and now you are situated over there so what you are talking about madan ji is uh, you are expecting the practitioner to be situated in that level of consciousness but uh, that comes with uh, the real practice sadguru even during initiation also the higher stages of initiation sadguru will pull your consciousness and will show you that so that you are motivated then only you know that oh this is the the point where i need to meditate so he shows you something which will which will motivate you to oh this is what i need to attain in my meditation but you have not attained that that is what sadguru dev will instruct that you need to practice this to reach this abode so for amit pal ji also because uh, whatever he was by then you know in front of uh, people other people he could be good or bad persons person but in front of sadguru when any soul come comes in front of sadguru sadguru does not look at the human being sadguru looks at the soul and only when he finds that this soul has done his purusharth in previous lives he deserves to be given what he is asking right now it is only then sadguru will even show that mercy and and give that glimpse of dasham dwar an opening of the dasham dwar but uh, sadguru dev did not establish amit pal ji at that point sadguru only showed him gave him the glimpse of what do you experience when tenth door opens but then sadguru further instructs him that you need to practice to reach and attain that experience if you really want to be there it's not that his 10th door is open 10th door was opened at that point only by sadguru and so he got that experience so basically once once you have established yourself let's say however long and practice that needs and let's say you do achieve that or you do get there mm -hmm. my real question is like you know after that what happens to you what changes in you what when you when you right. are going for a quest why you're doing that okay i want to go to so everest, but why i want to go to everest sure 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 so let me tell you one thing um I think there was a question asked by uh, Rupesh ji also in one of such sang that in meditation, please uh, also explain that when do we go beyond the sukshma body? When do we go beyond the karan body? Sadguru Dev explains in survey. He says that as long as you 
are associated with the mind and breath that means the sukshma body is still with you then he further goes and says as long as your consciousness is attached with the trigunas of the prakriti that means the karan body is still there so when one practices and raises the consciousness beyond the 10th door then that is the state when all the maya ends for you in the sense right now you have to manage your raga right you have to manage your raga that oh i i shouldn't get pulled into this subject or that subject you have to manage it and you train or you engage your mind into the bliss of satsang seva sadhana such that that a natural vairagya starts raising also within you because you start getting purified but yet you still remain in you know prone to fall into the raga again because you are still with the mind but when 10th door opens and when your consciousness establishes into the chetan dham meaning in the realm of consciousness then the trigunas completely vanish for you in the sense you attain the parvairagya parvairagya is that then there will be a natural vairagya within you and lasting everlasting vairagya within you then you will be attracted towards i mean automatically your consciousness will be attracted towards the almighty a natural attraction right now you are naturally attracted towards the subjects but when you establish your consciousness beyond the self realization then there is a natural flow of consciousness towards the almighty so at that point i i have had the experience with my brother who was in that state in my house my brother sachidanand ji was in my house i had spoken about him before in one of the satsang so in those states you know what he is eating what he is what is happening around him has no impact on him absolutely no impact and there is just a sahaj a graceful the simple gesture in his on his face as if he is udasin unaffected of anything happening there is nothing which is giving him smile there is nothing which is giving him sadness he is just udasin unaffected of anything happening around him and there is a complete silence around him you know when you go and enter into the room where he he was you know living automatically you will also be impacted by the kind of the silence that exists around that person who is in that state there is a natural way of silence around it a complete ahimsa you know you will feel as if by speaking also you are doing himsa in that ambience you will feel like that there will be a complete the ambience will be complete completely the ambience of ahimsa there is no violence that means there is a complete peace in that place so when we used to go there even even if we have to offer water to him you we our words used to stop by the impact of that ambience and we used to just say by gesture we used to just offer you know in you know, the glass of water to him something like that so there'll be a different aura of that person and i have personally experienced that by serving my brother and the guru bahan and and several other yogis who lived you know in my place so they will be in urdhagati such yogis will not be in the ardhagati they will be in the urdhagati in that state and that was the state of uh, my brother so 
So later Sadguru Sadguru Dev had to close his door. And Sadguru Dev closed his door and asked not to meditate because he is already ready for the journey. Sadguru Dev instructed him then that there are lot many seva which are due to happen by you. It is destined to happen. You are chosen to do that. But for that you have to stay in the prakriti. He never he never wanted to stay in the prakriti. He used to be just in the urdhagati inside because his door was open. So Sadguru, Vartaman Sadguru, the present Sadguru then had to close his door and then there are several things that happened with my brother. He is only seven years older to me. You can imagine. Just seven years older to me. When he was preparing for uh, uh, UPSC exam, Swamiji asked him, why are you preparing for this exam? Because the days are near when there will be several IS officers who will be going behind you. So why are you preparing for it? What is the use of it for you? He did not understand then how come? I'm, I'm just studying psychology right now and by no means I see it happening that the IS officers will be coming behind me. And then uh, Sadhgudev says that uh, your duty is to do prachar in Chhattisgarh. He is sent in Chhattisgarh and something happens that a, a very great disciple, a very pure soul, Lata Ushandiji, came in contact with Sachidanan Bhaiya and was very impressed with his uh, simplicity and with his uh, saintly behavior and was influenced and joined Vihangam Yoga. Incidentally, it happened that she became a BJP leader and their relationship still continued. Uh, you know, uh, she kept visiting ashram in Chhattisgarh, in Raipur. And eventually, Sajdanand Bhaiya became so close to her because there were several things that Sadhguru Dafal Devji Maharaj with Sadhguru, with Sadhguru Dev's blessings Lata Ushindiji's life also transformed. So she started considering Sachitanandji as his uh, uh, well-wisher. And everybody who was in, his, in her, uh, you know, whatever you call it, in her office, they are, started saluting Sachitanand Bhaiya. And then, Sada, then Sachitanand Bhaiya realized, oh, Swamiji was speaking about this moment then, about 10 years ago, that there will be a day when uh, the IS officers will be just uh, following you. It came true after 10 years. But for that to happen, he had to be in, in the nature, in the Prakriti. So Swamiji had to close his 10th door. But the soul is ready. The soul has done his tapa and he, the soul is ready. It is up to now Swamiji's wish. Whenever he will want, he can open the tenth door of Sajdanand Bhaiya and then his journey will complete. It will go beyond. He will need to just practice for six months. He will cross the fourth and the fifth stage and the union with Almighty will complete. So such is the glory of Sadhguru and such is the glory of the purity of the soul. So once your tenth door is open, only the Jivan Mukti Yogi, the one who have attained the God realization, when you complete your journey, it is only then your Urdha Gati will, will be natural, then it will come into your control. Otherwise, when you are on the way, the moment your tenth door opens, there is a natural attraction of your consciousness inward. So it is very difficult for you to stay in the, in the Prakriti with your body, with your Indriyas. 
So it becomes very difficult for one to live in this world in that state of Urdhagati. Only when the journey completes, when you become Jeevan Mukta, it is then only you attain the peace and you bring down your Surati to your body, leaving your eighth Surati, the eighth consciousness united with Almighty. With the rest of consciousness, you perform your natural duties with peace. But that state is not a state of a yogi who, whose tenth door has just opened. No. That natural control state is a state of a Jivan Mukti yogi. In between, there will be a Urdhagati. It will be difficult to manage uh, that particular soul by themselves unless, unless Sadhguru Dev controls it. So, I hope that clarifies a little bit about the state of a yogi whose door is open. Yes, yes. You know, the tenth door is open. Isn't that your ultimate state where you want to be in, you know, you attain moksha soon after that? No, 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 no. That is the third stage where the Kundalini awakens and tenth door opens. That's the third stage of Vihangam Yoga journey. After that, after that, a divine instructions will happen from Sadhguru to concentrate on another abode called Akshar Brahm which is the fourth stage of Vyangam Yoga. And when you attain that, then there will be further instructions about attaining the further subtle consciousness of Supreme Being. So there, the Vyangam Yoga journey begins from the Kundalini awakening, from 10th door openings. Prior to that, it is the Dharana. The Vyangam Yoga Dhyan begins after Self-Realization. It is the beginning of Dhyan. Prior to that is only dharana. Dhyan has not started yet. I, I certainly will need some more reading material to understand those uh, third and okay. fifth stages. Sure. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. So, do we have any other questions? So, now let me conclude with uh, the Sansmaran of what happened when Sadhguru Dafal Deji Maharaj, you know, before discarding the body, started preparing for the next Uttaradhikari of Sadhguru. Just like currently, the present Sadhguru, Sutan Deji Maharaj, has already started flowing his energy into Sadguru Uttaradhikari Sant Pravarshi Vigyan Devji Maharaj. Vigyan Devji Maharaj is already in the flow of Sadguru energy. He has started receiving Sadguru energy. The day he has been declared as the next Sadguru, the process has begun. So similarly, Sadhguru Sadhafal Devji Maharaj first tried to flow his energy onto another dear disciple, not uh, Dharmchand Devji Maharaj. First he tried with another disciple who was also a sadhak, a very, the, the dear, most dear disciple of Sadhafal Devji Maharaj. But the moment the Sadhguru flow, the energy started coming into the soul, that soul was restless, not able to hold that stream, the tremendous stream of energy and had to plead Sadhguru that, Oh Master, please pull it. I am not able to bear this energy. Please pull it away. And then Sadhguru Sadhafal Deji Maharaj had to pull it. And it's only then he said that, that it requires a, the greater soul to hold such power. And those are the chosen souls, the called upon souls. And says, uh, and then he tries the same with his son, Pratham Parampara Sadguru, Dharm Chandevji Maharaj. And Dharm Chandevji Maharaj was able to embrace it. He was able to hold it. 
so it it is it is it is not as gen you know it is not easy for a soul to become sadguru a soul has to have that level of capacity also to hold sadguru energy and so sadguru calls those chosen soul in their either family or a disciple any disciple can also become parampara sadguru if the disciple has that capability so whoever is the best capable disciple it doesn't matter whether it is in the family or in the disciple sadguru says whoever is the best capable soul becomes the next parampara sadguru otherwise the energy is not easy to hold by those who are not eligible not capable to to hold that energy sadguru energy has to be passed it takes 3 years imagine it is not a moment job it takes 3 complete years to flow the energy from the current sadguru to the next sadguru and the flow of that energy does not complete if the current sadguru is still in the body only when the current sadguru leaves the body then the complete flow transfer into the next sadguru and then only the next sadguru will know what is sadguru power in entirety and that's what exactly happened with parampara sadguru dhanchandej maharaj till the last moment he did not know what sadguru sadafal dev ji maharaj is till the last moment he did not know though he was the god realized but yet he did not know what is sadguru because sadguru power is only with sadguru sadguru keep the entire capability capability is only with sadguru and when sadguru leaves the body when the entire flow transfers into the next eligible soul it's only then they realize what is the power of sadguru and then he knew that what was not possible for sadguru sadafal dev ji maharaj then he used to look at sadafal dev ji maharaj as his father and then suddenly he realized that oh my god what power sadguru sadafal dev ji maharaj was he knew it only when the entire power transfers into him so such is the glory of making of a sadguru it is not a matter of reading vedas upanishads and being scholar of talking the details about those mantras that doesn't make you sadguru sadguru is a power who can give liberation to others who can give devotions to others it is a great privilege that all of us are now talking about the true entity called sadguru and trying to understand this with this we conclude thank you i ask isha ji to please conclude with shanti pat shanti pat ye prabhu prabhu shanti shanti mai shanti 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 jan shanti ho पूर्ण शांति मैं शांति हे प्रभु शांति प्रदान कर दूर हो सर्व शांति देव सदा फल शांति मैं शांति शांति सुख शांति बोले सतगुरु देव भगवान की जय जय सतगुरुदेव द नेक्स्ट वीक वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट सेवा what is sadguru seva and how is that performed thank you see you next week 3 o'clock saturday thank you ji